most of our older people, uh, the new stuff, really new stuff, have gone on us now, most of them. But I'm going to tell you something. I feel so privileged and so lucky uh, at the time that I was born because I was born at the tail end of, of, of getting to meet some of the greatest Iroquois leaders, men and women. And not only just to say hello to them, I was extra privileged that they were my buddies. I used to go with them to meetings and to, to ceremonies from Seneca all over on the Dagas. I used to see them cry. And I heard them laugh a lot of times too. I seen all parts of them. And I was lucky that I listened to them as much as I could. And I, I didn't really stick around with my own age when I was growing up because I felt real good buddies with those older people. It was fun to be with them. They know how to joke all the time. And, and, and they usually know how to tell the truth, too, when truth needs to be told. And if you needed a scolding, they sort of reluctantly would scold you. But you knew it was from a basis of love, not to criticize or to make fun of, but criticism that might help you to use it as a cane until you got better again so you can travel again. And I have to tell you, uh, some of the great ones that I knew was uh, Leon Shenandoah. Even the Tarodapo before him, I knew him too. Old Jake Thomas, Chief Jake Thomas of the Cayugas. He was my real good buddy. In fact, I was honored twice in my life uh, when he did the recital of the great law, which took 10 days. On two of those, he asked me to be his English translator in the afternoon. So twice in my life, I translate in English for him. I heard the great law four times in my life. And next week or so, I'm gonna be 65 years old. And in that 65 years, I only heard it from beginning to end, the great law, four times. And you know what the great law says? That every nation, according to our great law constitution, is supposed to hear the great law minimally once every five years without fail. That's the law itself, says that. That mean, minimally means at least once every five years. So in 10 years, you will have heard it twice. So in 15, you have heard it three times. I'm 65, and I only heard it four times. And that's every nation and its people are supposed to listen at least once every five years. But there's no law that says you can't listen to it twice a year but minimally, once every five years, for sure. Well, uh, that's why I was thinking I'm so lucky that Jake was my friend. And before him, there was another man in Grand River. His name was Roy Buck. I don't know anybody remember him. He was just a short little guy. And he was, he talks all the languages. If a Seneca come, he'll talk Seneca to you. Mohawk come, he switch right away. Mohawk, he talk to you. Cayuga come, he talk Cayuga to you. Most of those old people talk five or six languages fluently. They weren't afraid. And most of them never went to a Western school. <laughs> it seems when we start sending our kids to American or Canadian schools, grade schools, high school, then to get master's degree in universities, the dumber they got. <laughs> Most of they come out of there, they can barely talk English, <laughs> let alone five or six languages. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm saying that is true, <laughs> really true. 
Yeah. So something wrong here with the picture. We have to re refocus. Why is it like that? But anyway, um, they're all gone now. Those great guys. And they're, you know what they were trying to do? They were trying to rebuild our confederacy. They were trying to put back the pieces of our great history and our great spiritualism, the few that they were against great odds. It's like you and I trying to swim across the Atlantic Ocean and get there without getting tired. That's the task they had. And right to their death, they all did a superb job given what they had given to work with. And that's why they were so great. I think now that they're gone, that uh, with Kahnawagi's uh, grab it and get it, <laughs> and discipline, and, and, and us, and everything, that all together, I think there's enough pieces that we can put it back together to make it look whole again. But we cannot waste too much time because those that have the pieces here and there are also my age. <laughs> and there isn't that many that's my age that still have some of those pieces. But they have to put them, they have to sit. Something has to happen where, where their time will be placed in one place for maybe two years or so, a minimum of two years. In my language, we call ne shadikanyu. Shadikanyu. They will piece back together all the fractions, all the fragments of our knowledge. So, but between all of those fractions, there will be sutures. But at least it will heal with scars. It'll never be like the real thing. It'll be together with scars. But that also becomes part of our being in the future. And so it's a great thing it can happen. But we can't wait too many years. And then it's going to be gone forever. There would not be today a United States of America or a Canada, and I dare say there wouldn't even be an England or any of the European countries that exist today that has a democratic system of government had they not come here to North America. That's an absolute fact. There's no doubt about that. Because all you got to do is remember that when Columbus came here, what country? What professor in any university can name a country in all of Europe in the time of Columbus that had a democracy? Not a one. Because they had only the divine rights of kings and queens, dukes and duchess and noblemen and slaves and serfs. That's all they had. It wasn't until they put their foot in free in North America, that the notion of representative government and the practice they seen in Rio amongst the Seneca and Onondagas and Oneidas and Cayugas and so on. And then it was born. And I can even tell you that in 1754, there was an official meeting between the first European in Albany, New York. And our own grandfather, great-great-grandfather, was one of the reciters of the Constitution, the Iroquois Constitution, in 1754. And then after that, Thomas and Benjamin began to put together something close to it, using the guidance of the Iroquois Constitution. And you gotta remember, the Iroquois Haudenosaunee Constitution is a memorial of 2,000 years old. Not 1,000, 2,000 in its evolution. 
I used to say a thousand until some people corrected me. They were studying that. That's not natives either. 